again we're on BMAC car mods and I'm not sure if this is exactly a mod or like a almost like a, this feels almost like a repair and the reason why I'm going to say this is because um, when Volkswagen made this part they must have been having a joke they must have been they must have said ha 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 we're going to have a joke today we're going to put a boot light in but we're only going to spend the budget of a packet of skittles and some cheesy what's it because this see that there that is useless like what what is that in this boot why didn't they spend more money like why, why could they just spend like 30p more 30 pence more and just got something that would actually light up the boot instead of doing absolutely nothing <laughs> Okay, they're taking the piss out of us. They really have done. They made a decent car, and then it was like, must have, I think we've forgotten something. You know that, like the man. I think we've forgotten something. What? Hmm. What have we forgotten? Oh, boot light. Yeah, bang. That's what they did. There was no thought into this. This was this was instinct, and that's why we end up with boot lights like this. And and you know what? I'm not even gonna say it's just I'm not gonna say it's just Volkswagens. It's more than Volkswagens. Look, hold on. I wanna show you. I wanna show you. Now this is my my E60. My E60. Look at this. What is what is what is this gonna do for anybody? Like what and it hangs out. So anyway. Stop going from the point. The point is that we need to fix it. We need some illumination in the back, so that's what we're gonna to do today. So Volkswagen, next time spend more money. Germans, next time spend, spend more money on your lights. So now, let's do the interior lights. Boot light, mod. Yeah. Okay, first you're gonna to need to buy these LED strips, which will be available on my website. You can buy them already pre-cut or you can get them in a roll like this. We've got them in a roll like this because we're going to do a few more projects using it. Now, um, next thing you've got to do is you've got to look for a cutting point. You're going to see two dots on it, which are the places you can cut it. Now, we used a 35 centimeter length. That's what we required for this bit of, bit of um, modification it was doing here. But then we cut it at the location point that you need to cut it at. Now it's probably easier to use a scissors more so than this um, Stanley blade, but whatever works, works. So once you've cut the pieces that you actually require, um, you're going to need to scrape off the silicone because these are waterproof ones. The waterproof ones don't have silicone, but you're going to need to just cut back the silicone so it exposes the actual um, connectors itself, the, the power source where you're going to have to connect to itself. So what I did is I just used a Stanley blade and cut back as much silicone as possible. And then what you're gonna see me do is I'm gonna just actually scrape the rest off with the soldering iron. I'm just gonna just burn it away and it'll clean it all up. But um, it's, it's not tough, it's not difficult, but you just have to take your time because you don't wanna leave the soldering iron for it's too long because it'll burn everything else away. So as you can see, I'm just using the soldering iron just to clear up the bit of silicone that's hiding the connectors. Once you've cleaned it up, it should look, you should, well, you should be able to see both terminals and um, it should look something like this, which I'm gonna show you very shortly. So here you can see me showing you what the connector looks like once you've cleaned the solder off them. So that's what you're looking for with the um, trying to connect it. Now, obviously you've got to strip your cables. Um, I like to tin them first. When I say tin them, I like to put a bit of solder on them first. So it's got something to hold on to when you actually come to put it on the, the LED strip. Now here, here you're gonna see me just putting a little bit of solder on the actual connectors themselves here on the actual LED strip. Now that's important once again to take your time because if you leave it on there, you will burn it and you will damage it. Now the way I've understood to solder, this is the way I've learned to solder, is you heat up the part you're actually doing first and then put the solder onto it. You don't actually stick it onto the solder itself. You actually heat up the element and then bring the solder down to bond to the element. If you do it the other way around, you get what you, I think you call a cold joint and it doesn't actually adhere to the connector properly. So this is the way to do it. So we've got our blobs of um, solder and we're just gonna do 
tinder uh, wires as i'm showing again same same um method where i heat up the actual wires itself and then push the solder into it this way it goes all through the little copper strands and actually holds onto it the way it's supposed to and it'll give you a better connector when it comes to actually soldering onto the level soldering onto the led strip itself now with everything tinned up, we're just going to we'll solder, tin, same thing. We're just going to um, just touch them both together so they both melt and hold on nice and tight. Now it's important to get a good connection here because it's going to take quite a bit of movement and a bit of a beating. So get it on top of the solder and then just heat everything up and hopefully everything should go well and it holds really nice and tight. Now once these connections are done, give them time to cool and um, make sure you insulate them, which I haven't shown. <laughs> Once you've soldered your joints onto the LEDs, just connect them up. You know, you can uh, solder them, you can do whatever you want, but just connect them up, make sure you've got nice, good, sound, solid connections. So when it comes to connecting the car, you ain't gonna have no problems. Okay, so now we're onto the installation part of it. Now you're going to have to remove the back panel, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. Just start by lifting up the, the edge of the carpet and pulling it out. Now it's only held on by clips um, and yeah, it's just, it's just a simple pull out um, the side pull towards in towards the center of the car and the actual lower bit that I'm holding there actually just pulls in towards the car. So once you've removed that back panel, it's all pretty easy. It just comes off like you see I'm doing there. Okay, so the next thing to do is to turn off the light and you do that by just pushing the lock in with a screwdriver and the side light goes off. So now there's no power to it. Okay, so you undo the little port cavity there and push the side light through. Now you'll see the wiring there and it's pretty simple because it just moves the other side and you know, you can feel it. It's really, really easy like you see I'm doing right there. Just to show you exactly how it all works. So next we just undo the clip, which is easy. Just hold a couple of clamps on the side and push it back through. Then we've got a little bit of wire to work with. I was gonna go further down the loom, but no need. Now open the lock so you can test your LEDs and understand your polarity. Now what I should have said from before was it's better if you get red and black so you know which one is positive and negative. Then you won't have to do what I'm doing here. But just check the connectors working and everything's going good as it's supposed to. Now you've done that, start pushing the cable through, just feeding the wire so you can hide it and get close to the loom as possible, close to that plug as possible because we're going to use that plug as a power source. Same thing on the other side, open it up and just start to work the cables back through um, um, the, the, the paneling, the, the, the felt paneling. What we're gonna use is we're gonna guide this whole cable alongside the loom that's already running on the back side of the engine, or sorry, on the back side of the boot lid. So just get it in a position or near enough position and hold it there. As you can see I'm doing there. And then just use the um, the loom to go by just just follow the loom so I'm using a bit of electrical tape just to hold on to the loom so you know it's sturdy and it's stable and it's not moving while we're driving and stuff I use the cable ties as a guide just to hold it there for a the minute but actually use the uh, the electrical tape was actually better as a as a solid place to actually hold it now we've got it to near where we want it, we just have to strip back some of the uh, wiring that goes to the actual boot light itself. So just remove the insulation tape, either with a, with a cutter or, or just, just slide it back by hand or just undo it. Whatever you have to do, just get it undone. Now my initial idea was to actually splice it so I could go into it, but this stripper actually broke the cable. So I actually split the cable and had to um, just join it all up again but it doesn't really matter how you can do it you can do it as long as you get good connections you'll be fine so this was the meeting point where every all of the uh, wires were actually going to connect together okay so at this part we brought all the wires together and just just tied them all up just twisted them all up just to make sure everything was okay now it's all pretty boring that's why i've kind of fast forwarded it to be honest but we brought all of the wires to one spot all of them to one spot and then we checked them and made sure that everything was correct and the polarities were all correct. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's how we did it. 
that's how I did it, I should say, and, and, and that's what seemed to work all right. And here we're putting back on the plug that actually goes to the little light, the original light, and um, yeah, that's how we put it all together. Now to secure this connection and just take all the pressure off it, we use these crimp plugs. I use these crimp plugs, I've got to stop saying we. I use these crimp plugs. I think I had them available and I thought they were pretty good really. It just takes a little bit of, of pressure off it. So anything that pulls off it, it, it holds it all nice and together. Now to use these crimp plugs, you've got to have one of these, these pliers sort of things. These ones specially made for it where it actually crimps it. It's got like a little point in the middle and it actually holds it and crimps it. Um, I thought this was the best way to do this because it would take a lot of pressure off it because it has got quite a few wires on there. Now I could probably done it better. I'm sure there's people out there who know how to do it a whole lot better than me. But this is what I did. This is what I had. And it actually works really well. And it held nice and tight. So just, just, just a way how to do it. You can do it many other ways, but this is how I did it. So now we've got everything in position and we know it all works. It's just time to do the, the easiest part, I would say, really. Just strip off the plastic behind it and stick it up where you intend to hide your molding, your uh, light, sorry. Now, it's important to make sure that this is clean. I actually didn't show you the part where I cleaned it with a degreaser, an alcohol cleaner. And um, make sure it's clean wherever you're sticking it so it will hold nice and not drop off because it's going to be horrible if it drops off. Okay, do exactly the same on the other side. Make sure you've got it right, face side up, and just slide it under there and just rub your finger down along. Now make sure to hold your wires in the place where it's gonna be tucked away. Might be a bit tricky, you might have to just rock with it a little bit, but remember to be del delicate on them joints and um, hide the wire nice and not too much stress on it, all the usual stuff. Just be careful, just generally be careful with it. Okay, now everything's in place and you can see that everything is working. Just time to tuck away all your wiring that you might have hanging around. Now you could do that by using a little bit of um, insulation tape and just put back the inspection cap. And it's all done. Now it's just a few final bits put on the back panel, which just basically goes in position. And you just knock it on with your hand. Really, really simple, easy stuff. Make sure you're not pinching any wires and everything is working as it should. There you go, just looking behind there, make sure the clip's in. And yeah, that's it. Put the flap down and put your car back together and you're done. And this is how simple it is to um, get a different effect on your car. So there you go. Let's see what the results look like. Here's some footage of what the car looked like before, what the boot looked like before. Now, there's actually stuff in here. I'm sorry for the focusing, but it's because the camera couldn't pick up any real light and it was struggling with the different lights and the range of lights. So, you know, it, but this is what it really looked like. This is, this is the result of what it looked like with just that boot light when you've got the standard one in there. So, um, yeah, hopefully the other one will look a bit better. It's coming up now. Oh my days, that is a hell of a difference. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. That is brilliant. That is so much better. Look at that. That is so much better. Then when we opened it before and you couldn't see nothing. That is brilliant. So, they are good. <laughs> that is fantastic. That is such a massive difference. Excellent.